Hey, how's it going? This is Bill Brock from Team Rogue. Today we're going to go out and enjoy the parade of tall ships here in Portland, Maine. I'm really stoked. I hope you guys enjoy. So from here they're going to, where are they going? They're going to Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. I've never heard of that place. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. not far from Halifax, but it's a little bit closer. Um, and then, and, and that, of course, that all depends on weather and, and that kind of thing too. Um, but part of the reason that they do that is that there are requirements that go along with um, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard standards and qualifications for your license. You um, but they, they, they have to cross um, international right, right. border. Huh. So what do you know about this ship? You said it was uh, how old again? It was built in 1921, wow. designed by um, William Hand, and launched, uh, built and launched by Hodgden Brothers Shipyard in East Booth Bay, Maine. And um, it was built for Donald McMillan. He had pretty specific ideas of what he wanted. He was an explorer, and he wanted to go to the Arctic, and he took students eventually to the Arctic and did all kinds of exploration. And... Um, and so he, he it's, it was really his ship, and he ran it for um, well in, into the to the forties, and then he he sold it to the navy, and then he bought it back. I think is, is the story. But you, you might you probably need to. Um, I'm, I'm not like the boat history expert. You're going to get more from others here. Who but I think more. you know something that I'm really intrigued about. You guys are actually trying to raise money to help uh, keep this boat in service, correct? We are. We just launched the Bowdoin Centennial Campaign. It's a fundraising campaign for, um, well, it kind of breaks down into two pieces. One is to to raise $600,000 to replace the deck. While the deck is off, um, there will be systems that will be accessible that it, it's just going to be time to, to address whatever needs to be addressed um, in terms of upgrades. And there's a few different systems they're going to look at. Um, so there's that piece, and then there's a million-dollar endowment that will go with the ship. Um, this is the official vessel of the state of Maine. Oh, wow. It's also a National Historic Landmark. And like anything that has contact with salt water every day, um, it needs maintenance. So we're, we're, we've been planning for the deck restoration um, for some time, and... Uh, purchased the wood for it and it's been drying and went through um, an RFP process and we have a, a boat builder who is um, all uh, in line to do that work in the fall when we can take the ship out of the water after students are doing everything they can do on it in the fall it'll come out of the water it'll be out of the water for six months and uh, and they're sort of like that that's the window of time to get it all done and then it'll be back uh, back in use by May early May wow that's incredible so where can people donate? Um, we have um, a website online that is um, mainmaritime.edu, but there's a section of that called Support MMA, and so people through that can, can donate. Um, this is like my child. Yeah. We're standing on my child. <laughs> right? So... Um, this thing's really cool. I lived on a sailboat. I sailed for a really long time, uh -huh. but I would feel so lost just even like trying to figure out how this thing works. Oh, this is a pretty simple boat, though. I mean, the nice thing about her is she's easy to sail. You know, she's big enough so that the you have to understand the principles of sailing, but she's small enough and simple enough that you know she's very forgiving to people who are learning. And that's what really makes her a great training ship for the academy students now and for other students before. So, How large of a crew do you need to sail this? Uh, well, she has 16 bunks, and, you know, if you're sailing 24 hours, you really want 16 people. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so.
It's pretty cool stuff. I, I look for Sasquatch for a living. <laughs> Can you believe it? Well, no, I, actually, you know what I do? I do believe it because I, I, well, I lived in Eastport for, uh, for about five years, and um, I, 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 I got into uh, bronze casting. Oh, yeah. And uh, the gentleman that was teaching is really well known. I mean, he's done the work with the Smithsonian. He's a, Richard Cliver is a world-class uh, artist with bronze, and um, and uh, he one of the things is he's obsessed with Sasquatch. Oh, it's really? Incredible. Yeah. No, I mean no. He like cryptozoology is really what he's he he, just, he loves it, and I think he incorporates it into his art and stuff like that. And, That's cool. What's his yeah, name again? Uh, Richard Cliver. Huh. Yeah. Look him up. That's yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, it was kind of very random, you know that. That, uh, this, that he happens to live in Eastport, Maine, of all places. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's funny, Eastport's <laughs> supposed to be a really hot spot for Sasquatch. Is it really? Yeah, oh, yeah interesting. No, yeah, well, down east. It is for artists. It's, it, you know, I think it's very, very low key. You know, there's not a lot of people that, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of off the beaten track. It's a little hard to get to, so I think people can go up there and sort of have, have a place to All right, so what's your name, guy? My name is Eric Jurgensen. Eric Jurgensen. Yeah, that's like a Viking name, yeah, right? Yeah, almost, yeah. yeah. Well, my name is Bill Brock. It's great to this meet you, Eric. So uh, you were the uh, the captain of this ship, right? Yep, I've been captain for the last six years and uh, just recently moved to another position at Maine Maritime Academy. Wow, so. nice. So what is it like to captain a ship like this? I mean, this thing's awesome. Yeah, this is a, it's kind of, a, it's being a caretaker of a piece of history and also a, a relevant training tool. So it's a little bit of a dual role. Great. So you get to spend a lot of time making sure that the navigation equipment is up to speed and relevant and modern, Great. but also making sure that we're true to the traditions of the boat. Nice. Do you ever use the stars to navigate? or you yep. get, Yeah, we you do, do celestial navigation as part of our courses here at Maine Maritime. That's incredible. So, that, that's yeah. really cool to hear that tradition is still alive. Yeah. You know, that's that's awesome. But you do use modern equipment as well. Yep, most definitely. We have chart plotting capabilities and satellite communications and, nice. and everything that GPS. a modern, yeah, GPS, everything a modern mariner needs to have. Nice. So uh, can you tell me a little bit about this ship? I mean, yep. I, when I look at it, I don't know what I'm looking at. You know, I'm not used to anything like this. So yep. can we just start off with maybe like the bow? Uh, yeah, most so. definitely. So the Bowden is a, um, is a schooner yep. uh, and a bald-headed knockabout schooner which means she doesn't have a bowsprit, so she doesn't have any rigging out over the water. Okay. And that was done to by design because in the Arctic waters, which is the, the waters that Bowdoin was built to navigate, if you have your rig out over the water, you have major supports for the vessel out where ice can be a, a, a hazard to them. Right, right. So by bringing it on board and not having tall top sails, the boat is a lot safer to navigate in those conditions. Nice. And so a schooner, does that mean it has... Is that the two masts? The schooner has two masts, and uh, those masts are either the same height or the foremast is shorter than the mainmast, so the aftermast. All right. And uh, in the stern, it has another sail in the stern, correct? Well, she has she has four sails that are on, on two masts. Okay. Her forward most sail is a jib. The one we're standing next to is a staysail. The foresail is in the middle of the boat, and the main is the largest in the, uh, in the uh, complement. Most of the, half of the sail area is in the mainsail, and the rest is divided between the other three sails. All right. Um, so how long is this? She's 88 feet on deck. 88 feet. Yep. And, um, so she's fast? She's, well, she's not fast. <laughs> <laughs> she's an efficient vessel for what she was designed to do. She was built as a motor sailor, um, and in the Arctic waters, it's either very, very windy, or there's no wind at all. Oh, okay. So that the boat has always had an engine on board, always used the sails as propulsion as well, so she's kind of a using the best of both worlds. Nice. Awesome. So what was your favorite part about sailing this thing? The favorite, my favorite part about sailing this is the fact that you can go into harbors all over from New York City all the way to Greenland and people run down because they know this is the Bowdoin. And she right. has a history since 1921 of coming and going up and down the, the uh, U.S. coast, the Canadian Maritimes, and up into Greenland and Labrador. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks a lot for letting me come aboard yeah, no and, and share a piece of history, and Maine's history, because this, you know, before I stopped talking, I just wanted to express that this is Maine's ship, right? Yes, this is the official vessel of the state of Maine. That is so cool, It is man. right up there with the pine tree and the uh, whoopie pie. She's a true Maine. The, the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>